call the Senate Environmental Natural Resource Finance Committee to order. It's Wednesday, March 16th, 2022. Members, we have three bills today. Uh, we're going to start out, uh, and again, they're going to be laid over except for the uh, Wetland uh, Bank, Senate File 3751 has to go to finance and, uh, as quick as we possibly can. So, um, Senator Newman, you were just here. There you are. Senate file 2579. Welcome to the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members. Um, Senate file 2579 uh, came to me by way of a constituent request from Ellsworth Township uh, in uh, Meeker County, which is in my district. And the, the request is uh, to set up a grant program through the DNR to maintain uh, ditches that otherwise have no source of funding to maintain. Uh, and uh, the purpose of it is to, to really to ensure uh, water quality and upkeep on these ditches uh, as they affect the lakes and watershed uh, in the Meeker County area. Uh, I have uh, with me uh, Mr. Dave Utes, who is a uh, Ellsworth Township supervisor, as I understand it. And uh, I think that he would be able, Mr. Chairman, to fill you in a little better on the, uh, the background on this bill. Thank you, uh, Senator. Mr. Utes, welcome to the committee. Please identify yeah. yourself and go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Chairman and committee members, for uh, letting us testify on this. Uh, I'm a supervisor in Ellsworth Township, so I've been working on this project for quite some time. Um, actually, most of these waterways are not under the ditch appropriation money, so there's no way to clean them. And we've talked to the DNR, we've talked to soil and water conservation, we work with uh, the Corps of Engineers, and most of these waterways are at the end of large watersheds and are we've most of these are probably run through maybe one or two properties and the, actually the people that own these properties where these waterways run through have little or no benefit of cleaning them and the, the responsibility is supposed to be theirs but in order to get those cleaned we've worked with the uh, Minnesota Association of Townships and it's as a township we're not able to use taxpayer money to uh, clean these ditches or, or waterways uh, so we're, we're looking for some kind of funding that would help us that if we exhaust all our other resources uh, that we have some way of cleaning these and uh, I'm just going to take a look at my notes here so I don't. Uh, so the, the, the biggest thing is that we, if we want to clean these ditches, I, we've checked with different sources in Minnesota here, we would have to sue the maybe one or two landowners, which usually are retired farmers or uh, widows that own this land, which rented out. And since there's little or no impact to them on cleaning them, we would have to sue them and go through litigation to get these ditches cleaned. And you know, they're taxpayers and part of our township. So it's not really our benefit to try and sue those people to get them clean. So it'd be nice if we had funding for that. And most of these ditches are, are uh, sick, haven't been maintained for 60 to 100 years. We have one right now that I was told hasn't been anything done with for a hundred years and the one we were working on was 60. So uh, it's pretty important for us to find a way to get funding to clean these. And part of the thing that I would like to see is that if, if we do come up with this bill that a township or a county would have to submit a program that they have exhausted all their resources before they apply for this grant, which I think is a good idea. And then after, after these ditches are cleaned, I've talked to different counties and there's a way of 
turning this ditch over to the county ditch association so that they can maintain these ditches and then they they do is do a watershed program and then everybody on this watershed would help pay for the maintenance after the ditch has been cleaned and that that's a procedure we can go through after the ditches are finally cleaned and then from then on we don't have to worry about the maintenance anymore because the county county or counties that are involved in in this ditch will maintain the ditch after that so i think that's a real important part of it um i was just looking at any i do have i don't know if there's if you guys have any questions i do have some photos here of of uh damage that is being caused by the high water and i can pass them to you you can yeah. take a look at them they're quite graphic <clears throat> we'll hand them out yeah okay i i have them here and I don't have enough for everybody, but, uh, and I would probably like to have them back if I can. Sure, we can get somebody to make copies <clears throat> too here. Okay, and then I also <clears throat> I also have, um, we did on one of our waterways, we did a, a water surface profile with an airplane and they have like a, a sonar type thing. And so they fly over the waterway and uh, they can tell I, and I can have a copy of this made too. Um, they can tell how much sediment is in the waterway. And we have found that we have sometimes from 10 to 24 inches of sediment in the waterways. So that's why our, our water is backing up and we're losing shorelines. Uh, people that have lake cabins are losing their shorelines. They have to call in rock and riprap their shorelines. And the farmers are having a terrible time uh, working the edges of their fields and stuff because of the high water mark. So, and then these are, this is, here's some pictures. Um, his next three pictures are, are pictures of, of actual waterways, aerial, aerial photos of waterways that are plugged. And uh, you can take a look at those also. Other than that, I guess I don't know if there's this one. Uh, if I could, this one looks to be awful big here. Uh, there's a huge bank here. Is that is that what you're talking about? Yeah, those about banks are caving in. Th those banks are caving in from the high water, from the shore, from the water action, and because some of the this, the one I passed out here is one I've been working on for a couple of years, yeah. and that one <clears throat> we actually have about 3,000 acres of water and wetlands that are involved in this system. And the big chart that's coming, the aerial chart with the blue lines and red lines on it, shows, shows how plugged this system is. And in order to mitigate this, we had to actually dig out a pipe, a township pipe, and we dug a ditch and we left this ditch open. We, we had to reroute the road, leave the ditch open for over a year to bring down the water level because we were like 16 inches, 16 inches over normal high water mark. And it took over a year to drain that. But it still didn't drain completely because, because in the photos, the, the uh, waterway is plugged. It's plugged with 24 inches of debris. Mm -hmm. So, yes, this uh, aerial one is really quite clear as to. Yeah, and and if you look at that, it looks like we have a real lot of fall there. The blue lines, the checkered, the, the up and down blue lines, show that it looks like there's a lot of fall from the lake to the next mm -hmm. lake. But actually, there's only tenths of fall there. We're just, um, but that's an example of what we're dealing with, <laughs> and we've got. I think that there's many townships and, count and counties that are dealing with the same problem we are throughout the central Minnesota. So I guess my question would be, you have a township association. Do you, do you belong to that? Yes, we do. Okay, and, and have they been involved in it? Yes, I have called them many times. And, and, and actually, the one you're looking at now is two townships are involved. And originally, we were going to pay for the ditch cleaning ourselves. So the, the other township wrote us out a check for $7,000. And we were going to, so we were going to do a joint effort. And before we did any of this, I called the Association of Townships 
And they said that townships cannot get involved in draining public waters with taxpayer money. The only way we can do that is if it's affecting our roads, township property, or would be affecting our town hall. Then we have the permission to, to mitigate public water. But other than that, we cannot use taxpayer dollars to yeah. mitigate public water. Okay. Um, members, do you have questions of the testifier? Senator Dibble. Um, no, Mr. I don't have a question of the testifier. I just wanted to make a couple comments and observations mm -hmm. if that's appropriate at this time. Yes, it is. Go ahead. Great. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Senator Newman. Um, thank you for the bill. I think it's great. I appreciated the photos. You know, we're pretty familiar with this issue of ditches and erosion comes up a lot in mm -hmm. In especially of late with uh, a lot of the kind of the flooding events with climate change that has occurred. Um, so um, I, I, I appreciate uh, also as well that, um, you know, controlling uh, lake water levels and wetlands, et cetera, um, is, is a part of the, the narrative, the discussion, um, the eligible use of these funds. Um, but it begs, of course, the larger conversation that we continue to have about, um, you know, in the Sarge Sam's Outdoor Heritage Commission and a lot of different places about how we're gonna ultimately manage water on the land. Um, because we know that um, when we slough water off the land as quickly as we do, and it's just gonna get worse and worse through ditching systems, um, it's gonna cause the kinds of soil erosion, which has of course a consequence for ag interests, but also our water quality issues and our ability to maintain good soil on the land and the like. So. Um, I would just invite us all to have kind of a larger, more comprehensive conversation about um, as we adapt to climate change, how we're going to do more stormwater retention, detention on the land, avoid that overland flooding, the, the ditch erosion issues, um, the water quality issues. You know, re, you know we see um, Lassard Sams has always got these wonderful pictures of proposals of, you know, streams that have been straightened out here and here, and then restoring the meander through this farm field. <laughs> so a lot more of that would be fantastic. Thank you, Mr. Well, even at one time, they straightened out those meandering ones. And now we're back to meandering again because the water goes too fast. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. And Red yeah. River Basin, I know they, they straightened out a, a river because they wanted to get, a, get rid of the water quicker. Mm -hmm. Well, right. So now we're going full circle. So you're right. There's a lot of, well, water issues all over the state yeah. of Minnesota. So. Well, uh, so, Mr. President, if I could indulge for one more second. It's a huge issue sure. actually in Minneapolis. Um, folks might have seen that my uh, my former boss, city council member, Doria Mead, passed away a, uh, a week or two ago. She was on the city council for a number of years. One of her big claims to fame was restoring all of the lowland wetlands that we had uh, built houses in all over Minneapolis, which came to light a few some or about 20 years ago now there were a ton of stormwater events everyone's houses were flooded out beyond all reason like six or seven times and it occurred to everyone simultaneously not only is our ability to manage stormwater on its way to the wetlands inadequate in Minneapolis but then we had to basically restore these stormwater detention ponds, which had been the wetlands, which at one time post-World War II had a lot of housing pressure. So they just stuck houses wherever they could. And they put them where they shouldn't have. So these stormwater, storm management, water issues are not just a ag rural issue. They occur right mm -hmm. in the heart of the city too. Thank you. Uh, any further questions? Um, the DNR is involved in this in this particular bill. Do they want to weigh in at all? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kruger. Are you up? Are you here too? Yes. Welcome to the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, please okay. identify <laughs> yourself and go ahead. Thank you. My name is Jeff Krieger. I'm the executive director of the Minnesota Association of Townships. And I just lost my screen. <laughs> I apologize. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Senator Newman for bringing this bill forward. Uh, townships are an integral part of the surface water management uh, throughout the state 
as surface water enters and flows through the ditches along and around the 55,000 miles of township roads. These road ditches are not part of the state system and are maintained locally. Water management has become an increasingly important and demanding uh, part of township government over the years. As landowners uh, install more tile and more uh, water uh, mitigation infrastructure. Matt asks for your support for SF or Senate file 2579 as it provides funding to townships to manage surface waters within their ditches. It may also allow some towns to complete projects that would otherwise be held up for lack of funding uh, to address the water management issues related to our town road maintenance plan. Thank you for your attention to, for your attention to this issue and, uh, include, and including townships in the eligible grant recipients list. Thank you. Can, can you tell me how many, I mean, how many, oh boy, I'm sure you can't even come up with that number, how many townships that are having this issue? I have no idea. No, no, yeah. no, no concept as to how, how that long that is. Okay. Unfortunately, no. All right. The DNR was going to testify. I'm sorry. Are they are they online? Oh, they're online. Okay. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. Uh, who do we have? Oh, yeah. Randall Doney from the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources, Mr. Chair. Welcome to the welcome to the committee. Thank you. I said Randall Doney and I work in the Division of Ecological and Water Resources within the DNR. Um, I am the section manager for the Conservation Assistance and Regulation section. Um, a couple things uh, just wanted to bring to the to the committee's attention um, with this bill. I mean, the first thing to point out is we don't have an existing grant program for this type of activity. All of our grants are usually so associated with a specific program, whether it's your flood damage reduction, dam safety, or um, you know shoreland, something like that. So we need to develop. If this goes through, we need to develop a grant program. So keep that in mind. Um, and the other thing, just a uh, uh, cautionary uh, warning, you know, these individual projects, um, will, you know, with they have a substantial effect on the public water um, that can be a challenge sometimes for us to permit them under the water law. And so, you know, it's really important that before any of these proposals come forward, they have some early coordination with the DNR to kind of talk through what the issue is and what is allowable under the law. Because we wouldn't want a bunch of people expending a lot of energy on putting a proposal together when the end it's not something that we would be able to authorize. I mean, you know, vegetation removal or or small cleanouts can probably get done. But if we're if we're really draining one basin and that's going to be going down another, we need to consider the whole system and the impacts that might occur as part of that. And we'll have to do that as part of a uh, uh, review of any of these, but just, it's more of a buyer beware issue, just to warn people that not all of these projects, these clean outs will be able to be authorized depending on how big of an impact it is to the public water. Okay. okay. Members, any questions? Okay. I. Maybe I may make a suggestion and then we'll move on here that the DNR work together with the township. And I don't know if you have or not. I, I have one comment on that. Sure, go ahead. On, on the situation of, and every one of these I've worked with soil and water conservation, I've worked with the DNR. We have worked with the Corps of Engineers and the project that you saw that I passed out the literature on, the DNR, Gary Bennett out of Hutchinson, Minnesota, we worked together with everybody on that one, and they did give us a permit to clean 2,700 feet of that waterway, but because of a non-funding issue, we were never able to do that. So that permit is, the, the Corps of Engineers, everybody was involved in that, and we, we understand what he's talking about. We're not trying to drain, we're not trying to drain anything. We wanna keep our lakes at the, at the, a high water level mark that they're supposed to be at. So we're not trying to drain. And we've been working, I've worked with all the DNR, Corps of Engineers, uh, US Soil and uh, uh, US Fish and Wildlife. Uh, everyone is involved every time. Good. And we've had everybody out and all the permits are taken care of. Uh, when we put new pipes in all of our township roads, the DNR is always involved to make sure that the pipe goes in at the right level because most of those pipes control waterways and that maintains the lake levels. Yeah. So whatever height those pipes are put in is what the lake is going to be. Sure. 
So, so well, we're very aware. Yeah, of that. it seems like it's a statewide issue, though. Um, yeah, I mean, even, yeah. Even in the city, of, you know, as the Senator Dibble said, uh, uh, some of those things should be looked at as well. So, if there's no further questions, Senator Newman, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just to respond to your comment, uh, as far as with the association, we are more than willing to talk with the DNR at, at an associate, association level. Sure. And uh, to have the have that, uh, I would certainly that suggest that if you're going to run into a, a roadblock, otherwise, and, and uh, see if we can get those avenues opened up. Yes, Senator Newman, Mr. Yep. Chairman, uh, members, and just thank you for uh, for hearing the bill. Uh, uh, it, it's going to be, as Senator Dibble indicated, an increasingly important and difficult question to take care of surface water. Uh, so. Uh, just thank you for hearing the bill. And I assume you're gonna lay the bill over, Mr. Chairman. That's right, Senate file number 2579 will be laid over. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And members, I'll just share from here. I've got a couple of bills here. Uh, the, uh, I'll introduce it from the chair's position here real quickly. Off highway, um, motorcycle and off road. If the testifiers would like to come, come forward. Senate file 3761, 3761, uh, the ambassador uh, program. Uh, this is something that, that's been certainly around for, for some time, I believe, or at least talked about the legislation extends the ATV ambassador program and the DNR and the off-highway motorcycles, dirt bikes, and four by four road vehicles, Jeeps, and so on. Um, the appropriation is for $40,000 for the year 2022, as well as the same for 2023. <clears throat> I think I do have an amendment. Uh, members, if you'd look in your packet, you do have a, an amendment, an A1 amendment. And I would just like to offer that right now. Uh, maybe I'll have the, uh, what I'll do is I'll have uh, Mr. Larson here uh describe possibly the, the amendment or have legal i guess maybe i'll do that i'll have legal go ahead and do that mr uh, stanley mr chair members good morning uh the a1 amendment makes a couple of changes it deletes the fiscal year 2022 appropriation so as amended there would only be the forty thousand dollars in the uh, fiscal year 23 amendment uh, uh fiscal year remaining and then it also sets aside $4,000 for each of the uh, grant amounts for administrative costs. Okay. Members, any questions? Okay, we have three testifiers. Two? Oh, I'm sorry, I should adopt the amendment. That's right. Um, I move the A1 amendment to Senate file 3761. All in favor say aye. Aye. Both same sign. The amendment is adopted. Uh, Mr. Larson. Mr. Chair, good. good. Okay. Could we have Mr. Umfress go first. Mr. Chair and committee, I'm Tom Umfress. I'm here representing the Amateur Riders Motorcycle Association. Okay. We are the statewide association that kind of monitors and keeps up on our, our funding and our legislation and works with, sure. um, as you guys probably know, Ray Bowen works with us or for us and Mr. Hackbarth there as well. So we are here in support of the Senate file 3761 as amended by the A1 amendment. We've been involved since this ambassador program was created, I believe it was back in 2007. So if you had actually looked at that enabling legislation, it was inclusive of all the user groups, uh, but the funding had ended up only being from the ATV program. So now we want to support adding funding from the off highway motorcycle program and then ORVs as well. So basically we're here in support of it and thank you for authoring. Maybe you would give a short description of what, what exactly it is. Okay, yeah. For, for the so members. The, with, yeah, so this, um, the, the ambassador program was a program created by the user community to help um, put a presence out on the ground, expand uh, training opportunities for people, appropriate use, sharing where they can go, maps, all that type of stuff. So we uh, created that program a long time ago and users volunteer to be these ambassadors out there and they can get expenses and stuff covered. So that's where this money gets used. 
Um, and then since we want to have uh, off-highway motorcycles be participating in that program, we don't want to be drawing funds from the ATV account to do that. We'll put in funds from the off-highway motorcycle account. And then we're working with enforcement on the steps of certifying the people to be ambassadors and stuff. And I understand they'll be somewhat of an identified by uniform and things like that. Yeah, so the, the way the program works today, they have a like a vest, a yellow vest, safety vest that has uh, a DNR issued patch. And I think they have an ID card and sure. such as well. And they do have to go and be certified or go through a training program with uh, the Division of Enforcement from the DNR. So it's not anybody can just sign up and go do this. They have to be approved as an ambassador. Good. Anybody else, Mr. Larson? Mr. Chair, members, Dan Larson, Minnesota Four Wheel Drive Association. We appreciate Senator Ingerbritson's leadership in sponsoring the bill, Senator Rood and Senator Eichhorn for co-sponsoring. Uh, I told you yesterday uh, on the uh, Senator Box bill, Minnesota Four Wheel Drive Association is, is you're gonna be seeing more of us. And so uh, this, we certainly support this bill as amended. Uh, and, um, and the reason, as Mr. Umfress said, uh, uh, ATVs have been funding the ambassador program up until this point. The reason that Minnesota four wheel drive and the off-road vehicle account has not been tapped for an ambassador program is simply because we don't have the trail miles yet for this purpose. And so this is an exciting time for us. We've looked forward to being able to testify in a, on a bill like this to say we're ready. The, the uh, off-road vehicle uh, touring and trail systems, I laid it out yesterday. We've got, uh, we, we've got a few high profile uh, touring route and trail systems that are gonna come online this summer. We're already using the border to border touring route. It's not official yet, but uh, that's, uh, Silver Bay to the Canadian border at North Dakota with Pembina, bisecting the top third of the state. And that's the backbone of the program. And we're gonna be working because of this master plan that, that's gonna come online uh, in June. We're gonna be working with the local governments on the committee and have a basis for making those approach, have a formal process. So we're, we're doing the things we need to do correctly and we're happy to be here today in support of this funding and getting trails on the ground and actually having the need for a trail ambassador program again, because in the communities that we work with, we work with communities that welcome us in and we build deep, mutually beneficial relationships. And this is gonna help us because you, got, you, want, you wanna know that you have another set of eyes and ears on those trail systems and touring routes so that if something happens locally, the locals have a person to contact and it's a one-stop shop. So we appreciate it. Thank you, Senator, for bringing it forward. Minnesota Four Wheel Drive Association supports. Thank you. Any further questions of the testifiers members? We all hear about the trails, you know, and, and all the senators have talked about it at different times. Uh, and I think actually Senator Dimmel brought it up the other day. If you don't have trails, they're gonna make their trails. And, um, uh, we know we know the kind of damage that could be done. Uh, I have two or three of them myself, and and um, just what those tires can do to to any any vehicle that doesn't have a trail. So uh, having that other set of eyes out there is certainly going to be great. I think so. And Mr. Members, Mr. Chair, yeah, uh, Mr. Larson. our message to this committee and members of the state is that if you don't already have a Jeep or a Range Rover. You should get one. You should this get one. is going to be a great system. Okay. Well, you're promising us that, so we're, we're holding your feet to the fire on that. Well, we've worked before on things like this, <laughs> so, and it worked out the way we said. All right. Seeing no further questions, we'll lay uh, Senate File 3761 as amended over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next bill is the uh, straightforward road wetland replacement program. Um, members, if you've been here a while, you've, you see this bill all the time. If the testifiers would come forward, those that wanna testify. Uh, I do have an Anoka County engineer, maybe they're here, but um, the bill provides one-time 
ten million dollar general fund appropriation, uh, which is an obligation the state of Minnesota has had for many years. And what it does is uh, uh, make sure that the agencies has enough uh, wetland credits uh, in the bank to satisfy local road and wetland impacts during the construction season. The state assumed responsibility, as I talked about earlier, for mitigating local wetland impacts as a condition of the Wetland Conservation Act reform back in 1996. <clears throat> but funding the program has never been put into the Bowser base. Uh, so um, for whatever reason, this has become a, uh, I, I guess you, the term is a political football. It goes back and forth. It's, fu it's funded in this uh, funding cycle. It's funded here and it's funding there. A lot of times it ends up bonding uh, geo bonds as well as cash and and uh, uh, I know there's a there's a larger ask uh, as well Senator uh, Senator um, Lang has got a uh, an ask and and uh, he's going to be bringing that forward to the uh, finance committee and and frankly uh, that's what they want to see they want to see it fairly quickly so they can uh, make the decision uh, uh, I think Senator Bach and Senator Rosen will be having some discussions as to whether we go beyond the 10 million uh, and add another 14 and a half million to that. So um, that's the bill uh, folks. And it's, you know, as you can see, it's supported by, I guess I don't have any of those handouts, but it's supported by AMC, uh, rural Minnesota counties. Uh, uh, there is one handout in my uh, Minnesota Association of counties. Would they like to testify at all? Or uh, I think everybody in the committee knows what this is all about. Uh, and knows the urgency. Maybe we could. Maybe I could get you to come up uh, and testify as to how much money is still in the fund. If you have any idea about that, because I know we've been up against the up against the wall some years uh, that it has to be done like yesterday. So if you can give us a little idea, welcome to the committee. Thank you, uh, Brian Martinson, Environment and Natural Resources Policy Analyst uh, with the Association of Minnesota Counties. I believe the uh, Bowser staff should be on the line and they could probably give you more uh, particular feedback on the numbers, where the bank service credits are at this time and the amounts. We also have a county engineer from Anoka who's prepared, I believe should be on the line and prepared to give you testimony, but you've, you've laid out the issue well and this has been historically underfunded and we semi uh, regularly run into situations where the bank service areas are out of credits and then we uh, need emergency money to purchase credits and get things back on track. So uh, this your bill um, and the cash amount gives us good flexibility to to try and address those issues in a timely manner, but perhaps we can have uh, the test fire from Anoka sure. offer mm -hmm. some more background. Mr. McPherson, uh, I believe you're online. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. My name is Joe McPherson. I am the transportation division manager and county engineer for Anoka County. And uh, I'm, I appreciate the opportunity to testify on behalf of my partners and association members with the Minnesota County Engineers Association, as well as our partners there at AMC. And so we are in support of the proposed bill to bring that $10 million of cash into this program. But again, as, as you've stated eloquently, as well as Brian, there's still that ongoing need of continual support. We need a stable funding mechanism to fund this, uh, to fund the program year after year. Uh, as Brian mentioned, uh, there's been several times in history where uh, bank service areas around the state have gone empty. They've been depleted. And as a roadway authority, when we're putting together these projects, uh, you know, their highway safety improvement projects, many times they're tied to a fatality on a roadway, a pedestrian that's been killed, uh, you know, very serious injuries. We're responding to that. And when those service areas go dry, it really is a drawback with our project delivery and our program delivery. So I, I definitely support uh, what you put before the committee today. But again, that continued support for additional funding, a base funding strategy for Bowser and that program is very detrimental to the program. And, um, you know, 
being in Anoka County, we're somewhat unique in the state that we do have our very rural areas of the county, as well as our densely populated urban areas. And we experience these wetland impacts in both areas and everything in between. So, you know, I, I think I can speak um, uh, pretty confidently about what others in the state are, are feeling. And we see it in both areas. We'll see those banks dry up and then it's truly a struggle to try and find something to keep these projects on track. So again, I appreciate the opportunity to testify today. Appreciate the committee members hearing this and uh, we offer our continued support for this bill. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll go next to the uh, board and so soil and water uh, manager, Les Lem. Uh, sure, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and committee members. Um, Les Lem, the Wetlands Section Manager for the Board of Water and Soil Resources, and we administer the Local Government Roads Wetland Replacement Program, also commonly referred to as the Local Roads or the Local Road Program. Um, so I can give you just a really brief overview of the program and then be available for, for questions. I believe Assistant Director Dave Wirens is also in attendance and he'd be available to help with any questions as well. Um, but the, the, the local road program was established in statute in 1996. Um, and as you know, as already testified, and as you know, to provide the necessary, you know, wetland replacement are also referred to as mitigation for those wetlands impacted by local government roads uh, when they're upgraded to meet safety and design standards. So prior to that, each local government was responsible for developing their own mitigation project every time they had a project that impacted a wetland. So under this program, Bowser is responsible for providing that mitigation for the local governments. That's not only resulted in larger, higher quality and more sustainable replacement of wetlands, but it's dramatically more efficient um, due to the economies of scale. So we use the funds appropriated by the legislature to restore wetlands and acquire wetland mitigation credits across the state. Um, we mentioned uh, the previous testifier mentioned bank service areas. Uh, watershed based service areas that the that that uh, we use under state and, and federal law and we work with both the local governments and the Corps of Engineers to provide the mitigation um, required by law for each of those road projects. So I, I think an important point is that these wetland restoration projects are long term projects and they take you know, up to 10 years to become fully established and to the point where we receive all of those mitigation credits. So we have to look at the local government mitigation needs over the long term and we have to plan well ahead. So, you know, as already it's been referred to, you know, over the past 15 years or so, uh, the funding for this program hasn't been adequate to keep up with those mitigation needs of the local governments. So we did start running out of mitigation credits in parts of the state. When that happens, we have to use credits from other watersheds, other bank service areas that causes us to incur penalties under federal and state law, which means we use the credits we do have even faster. And in some cases without any mitigation, the local governments can't obtain their permits. So they do get delays or, um, in being able to uh, complete their projects. So, you know, thanks to legislative appropriations in the last few years, the program has remained open and now we're actually on a trajectory to become sustainable again. You know, to where we would have that adequate supply of mitigation credits in each of the program's watershed based service areas. But it took us several years and, you know, several insufficient appropriations, frankly, to uh, get to that point where we were running out of credits. Um, and because of the long term nature of these projects, it, it's going to take several years to get to the point where that program is sustainable again. So currently, two of the state's 10 watershed based service areas have zero credits. Um, two others are nearing zero credits and three others have less than a one year supply of credits. So, you know, based on the mitigation needs of local government road projects and the mitigation credits we expect to receive from wetland restoration projects we currently have underway, our current projected need to meet the state's uh, current obligations to local governments and to keep that program moving back to that point of long, long term sustainability is uh, it, it, roughly 20 million. Um, so I, with that, um, Mr. Chair, I can remain available for any other questions that, uh, any of the committee members may have. Thank you. Um, Mr. Larson, would you like to come up? Mr. Chair, quickly, thank you. Dan Larson, Minnesota Rural Counties. I, I just wanted to reiterate, uh, what something that you brought up, 1996, the Wetland Conservation Act revision. 
that was, I was here at that time, and that was uh, BG before Greg. So a, a long time ago. And uh, it is a long time ago. And I just want to get it on record what Mr. Lem said uh, the importance of, of putting baseline funding into Bowser's base. This bill, uh, when we put it together, it took 18 months and everybody was involved. Wetland uh, uh, conservation groups, sportsmen's groups, local governments groups. It took 18 months, but you put together in the end, a three tier wetland conservation act that became the model for other states across the nation. And this is the piece, this one here, who's gonna pay for the mitigation on a local road when you straighten out a road that curves that people are driving straight off of into a wetland. And, it, and we made the case it was the state responsibility because it's a state mandate. The state ultimately agreed and then didn't fund adequately. So this is your chance and I'm gonna, I'm no spring chicken anymore. I wanna see this money get into the base of the Board of Water and Soil Resources before I move on to whatever else the next thing is. So this is your chance to, to, to get the right thing. It's no right way to run a railroad. And uh, on the patchwork stuff where we're scrambling around at the end of every session to try and fund these wetland credits. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Members, I believe that's it for testimony. Is there anybody else that would like to testify on behalf? Oh, Senator Dibble, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'll, <clears throat> um, I'll let you call for final testifiers and then I'll have a comment and a question. Yeah, if, if there's anybody else that would like to testify for or against the bill, I don't see anybody. Is there anybody online? No. Go ahead, Senator Dibble. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, so members, um, we heard testimony from uh, a number of the interests that also have uh, letters in our packets here, um, Micah, well, we see Mr. Novak here, um, Association of Minnesota Counties, Transportation Alliance, you heard from the county engineers, the rural counties. We have the AGC Associated General Contractors and then Olmstead County as well. So um, there's a lot of uh, love and support for your bill, um, but what I, what I also read in these letters and I think I heard hinted at in the testimony, well, I think Mr. Larson was quite explicit. Um, it's a great start, um, but, uh, but we need a more both uh, this year and also need to um, see what we can do to create a base level of funding so that we don't run into the situation that we ran into back in uh, 2020 when uh, there was a near statewide emptying out of, of the wetland uh, bank credits. Um, so maybe my question is to you, Mr. Chair, as the author, um, is there a is there a vision to to do something like that? And 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 Mr. you heard it from Mr. Larson. We he's not going to come around anymore. So maybe if we don't want to see his face at the testifiers table, this is our way to do it. This is it. <laughs> if he achieves there his are lifetime, kind of incentive, there are some incentives that might be worth <laughs> following up on. Yeah. Um, but what, no. yeah, what 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 are what is the prevailing wisdom? What is the thought? What is your thought about um, doing something so that we would not that we don't have you know, these dribs and drabs year to year underfunding and or find ourselves in the dire circumstance that we had in 2020. Yeah, well, uh, Senator, I, I agree 100%. And I, and I, I, I'm committed to taking it to the to the Finance Committee. I, I told Senator uh, Lang, uh, I know he had wanted to add to it. And I don't disagree with that. In fact, I'm in favor of that part. Uh, but I'm really in favor of finding a place for, you know, for it to, uh, to roost finally, um, whether it be this committee, whether it be, well, you can't do that in bonding. You can't have a, you know, a uh, base appropriation and bonding year to year, uh, but it may be even transportation. I mean, transportation, obviously, uh, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about transportation jobs. So that's a discussion that we should, we should really, uh, really have. And I'm, I'm certainly in favor of doing that. Uh, I won't be around to have to deal with this any longer, uh, as, as you well know, um, but it would be nice to, to have some stable funding uh, so these projects can go on. Minnesota is just, well, I don't have to tell you, you're on transportation, you see the amount of money that's needed there now, and that's increasing with the inflation and whatnot. So uh, we ought not to be having to go to different districts of the 10 districts and then having to actually pay 
you know, penalties for doing that, uh, it just doesn't seem right. So uh, it certainly has my support, and I'd love to say the whole committee uh, would support that. Uh, I'll bring that to the Finance Committee. Great. Well, you have my support, Mr. Chair. Very good. Thanks. Thank you. Any Anybody else? Hearing none, uh, I move that Senate Trial 3751 to be passed and, and re-referred to the Finance Committee. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those same sign. The bill will move on. Thank you, members. That concludes the, uh, the day. Uh, so we stand adjourned. <laughs>